हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू डाउट फोरम दिस क्वेश्चन इज वन एंड ऑफ अ स्ट्रिंग ऑफ लेंथ एल इज कनेक्टेड टू अ पार्टिकल ऑफ मैस एम द अदर एंड इज कनेक्टेड टू अ स्मॉल पैग ऑन अ स्मूथ हॉरिजॉन्टल टेबल इफ द पार्टिकल मूव्स इन सर्किल विद स्पीड वी द नेट फोर्स ऑन द पार्टिकल डायरेक्टेड टूवर्ड द सेंटर विल बी टी रिप्रेजेंट रिटेंशन इन द स्टिंग एंड द फोर ऑप्शन आर गिविंग आफ्टर रीडिंग दिस क्वेश्चन इट हैज बिकम क्लियर दैट दिस क्वेश्चन इज बेस्ड ऑन द सर्कुलर मोशन so before i tell you the answer of this question let me explain little bit about the circular motion a circular motion is a motion when an object moves along the circumference of a circle so suppose this is a circle and if an object is moving along the circumference of this circle we call this motion as a circular motion so let's consider there is an object this is an object its mass is m and if this object is moving along the circumference of this circle we call its motion as the circular motion now there is a prime requirement for any object to move along the circumference or to move in a circular path and that prime requirement is that there has to be a net force there has to be a net force directed towards the center of the path because this is a circular path so it will definitely have a center so for an object to remain in circular motion or to do the circular motion a net force there has to be a net force directed towards the center and we call this force as the centripetal force so this centripetal force is the prime requirement for any object to move along the circular path the formula for this centripetal force fc is m into v square divided by r here m is the mass of the object v is the tangential velocity of the object because this object is moving in a circular path so every time its speed is getting changed when the object is here its speed would be like this in in the tangential form when this object reaches here now the speed the direction of the speed becomes here when this object reaches at this point here the the direction of the velocity would be like this similarly that we make this position as well when the object is in the downwards position this would be the direction of velocity so here v is the tangential velocity r is the radius of this circle or radius of this circular path so because this object is moving along this circular path suppose this r is the radius if this r is the radius so we can we need this much amount of force directed towards the center always remember that the direction of this centripetal force is always towards the center so when this object is at this position the direction of the centripetal force force would be here suppose this object reaches at this point so here also the direction of this centripetal force would be towards the center so we can see that the direction of the centripetal force is continuously changing and it always remain directed towards the center if this is the center so the direction is continuously changing from this side we can see that the direction is towards the left when the object reaches at this point the direction of the centripetal force is downwards similarly when the object reaches here the direction of the centripetal force would be towards the right and when the object reaches at the bottom point the direction of the centripetal force would be towards the upward so this much amount of force is required for any object to to move along a circular path so this is the formula from which we can get the amount of force required now one more thing one we must understand that this point the tangential velocity v is here this point the tangential velocity is like this at this point is this at this point is this when there is a force acting on this object and the object is moving in this direction so in the direction of velocity there would be a displacement so if the object is moving with a velocity towards this direction so the direction of the displacement would be like this similarly in this case also the direction of the displacement would be in the direction of the velocity always similarly here this would be the direction of the displacement and here the direction of the displacement would be like this so from every point we can see that there is a 90 degree angle between the force because this is the direction of the centripetal force and this is the direction of the displacement so there is a 90 degree angle between the fo centripetal force and the displacement so if someone asks us to find out the work done by the centripetal force work done by the centripetal force w would be force into displacement into cos theta from here force is this centripetal force this is the direct displacement d now the cos theta is cos 
the value of cos 90 is 0 so work done by the centripetal force would become 0 so actually no work has been done by the centripetal force but this force is required for any object to move in a circular path it always direct towards the center so from here we have seen that the magnitude of the force required for any object to remain in a circular motion now let's take the example of a string so when a mass m is attached to a string and we must have feel this that whenever we take a string and attach a stone or or an object in the one end of this string and when we start rotating this we must feel a stress in the string we must have feel this at some point of our life whenever we take an object and tie it with a with a stone and when we start to rotate it we will feel a stress in the string so that stress is nothing but the tension in the string so let me make a diagram suppose this is the center and this is the string now i am talking about the string also because in this example we have not taken the any string here we have just shown that an object which is free to move in this circular path so this much amount of force is required to maintain this motion now we are taking that there is an object and this object is attached to a string so this is an object this object is at attached to this string and the mass of this object is m now we will find that how this object will move in a circular path as we can see that this object is here after some time this object would be reaching here and after some time it would be reaching here and after some time it may reach here as well but every time this object is tied to this string so this is the string and this is the center of this circular path and this is the string the length of this string is r which is also equal to the radius this is r this is r this is r and this object is moving in a circular path so let's take the example of this point when the object is here and when we make the total forces acting on this would be there would be a weight which is m into g which is directing towards the downwards and as we can see that there would be a tension in the string as well there there would be a tension t in this now we need a centripetal force in order to make this object move in this circular path so the direction of the centripetal force is always towards the center so from here we can see that there's a force which is acting towards the center and there's another force weight which is acting outwards the center so there has t must be greater than mg then only this object will move in a circular path because if t is less than mg then this object cannot make a circular motion because we require a net force towards the center so here the net force that is the centripetal force fc would be t minus mg this would be the net force which is acting towards the center now when this object reaches here what we can see that the mass of object is m so there would be a weight mg which is directed always directed towards the downwards now the tension in the string would be like this t so here we can see that the weight of an object and the tension is not aligned or neither they are acting in the same direction nor they are acting opposite so this will not affect each other so here the type value of tension might be anything but at this point the centripetal force would be equal to the ten tension in the string because this is directed towards the center and we require a force acting towards the center just to make this object move in a circular path now when the same object reaches here what happens when the object reaches here the mass mg let me change the color the mass of this object is m so the weight of the body would be acting like this and also the tension tension is also acting towards the center so from here we can see that the centripetal force fc would be the sum of mg plus t this is the same case as this was because the the weight of the body would be like this and the tension is always towards the center so this is the tension so here they are not related to each other so at this point also the centripetal force fc would be equal to the tension so this is about the when a, when an object is tied with a string and we rotate it on a circular path so this is how we get the centripetal force when the object is at the bottom point the centripetal force is given by t minus mg when the object is at this point the centripetal force is equal to the tension in the string when the object is at the topmost point the centripetal force is the sum of weight plus tension and here also at this point the centripetal force is, is balanced by the tension in the string so this is about the motion of a string 
when it is attached to the mass m at its one end. Now let's take the example of a track when an object is moving on the track. So what happens? Suppose this is a track and there is an object. So this is an object and it is moving in this track, in this circular track. So always the mass of this object would be downwards. This is the mg if m is the mass of body. So weight would always act downwards because there is a contact between this circular track and the body. So a normal will act. Normal is always perpendicular to the contact. So this normal would be like this. Here we can see because this object is moving in a circular path and for, an, for any object to move in a circular path, a force or we can say the centripetal force is required. So in this case, always n should be greater than mg. Then only we will get some centripetal force. If this normal is less than mg, this object would not be able to make the circular motion. So at this point, the centripetal force Fc would be given by n minus mg. Now, so now suppose this same object reaches here. When this object reaches here, what happens? The weight of the body would always act downwards. Because the contact is here, so the normal will also like in the same direction. So at this point, the centripetal force Fc would be the sum of weight of this object plus normal. So this is about the motion on a track or a circular motion on a track. Okay. So after knowing all this concept, let's get back to the question. Here in this question, we so far we have discussed about the vertical motion. So in this question, what is happening that this circular path, the motion in a circular path is happening in a horizontal table. So let me take an example of horizontal table just to make you feel comfortable. So suppose this is a horizontal table. The question says this, this is the mass M. This mass is attached to a string whose length is given as L and it is moving on a smooth surface. It means the friction is not there and it is moving in a circular path like this. What happens when an object moves along a circular path which is tied to a string? We know that a tension will act. So the direction of tension is always towards the center of this. So this would be the direction of tension. Now other than this tension, there would be two types of force. The first would be the weight of the body which would be acting like this downwards which would be equal to the mass time g because there is a contact between the table and this object so a normal will also act so this would be its normal so these weight so this weight and this normal is opposite to each other so they will balance e each other so here mass times gravity would be equal to the normal now the only force which remains is the tension in the string which is acting towards the center of this and we know that any for any object to rotate or move in a circular path, a centripetal force Fc is required. So in this case, only tension is acting because this weight and this normal has cancelled each other or they are balancing each other. So the only force which is remain is the tension on the string. So this tension will provide the required centripetal force. So the centripetal force required for this motion to continue would be equal to the tension in the string. So our option four is the correct one. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.